Thing, a thing is up like the Rocky Mountains right yeah, now. Yeah, we've been having kind of tutorial the last couple of so <laughs> minutes uh, with Rob with his mute button. We have Jackie here to uh, to instruct. We got a lot going yeah. on here. We like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this uh, show is produced by the sports doctor Colin McLaughlin and brought to you in part by the Berkeley County Health Department and their quick response teams. Also brought to you by Parsons Sport of Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. And by the Mansion Ferretti Law Offices in Martinsburg, WVJusticeLawyers.com. Get more with Mansion Ferretti. We've got the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield, the second hour. Billy. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here as always. Emla, Maria Lawrence in, in the house. Good morning. Did you hear Cindy Lauper is going to go back on tour for like a final farewell tour? Wow. Right? Might have to get my big 80s going on and yeah. just go see her. Did you have all the stuff, you know, the Madonna stuff? That, I did uh, not. I was really more... Uh, in terms of music and everything, I really liked the set. I preferred the 70s. Um, well, yeah, I you can know, see that. Um, so I didn't really. You're more of a child of the 70s than the 80s, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. What about I'm the that old. What about the 50s? <laughs> no. <Maria? laughs> I was barely born then, Bill. So. Bill. Bill's big thing as a teenager was running around and going, Did you hear World War II ended? <laughs> 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 you don't deserve this abuse. I do so. not deserve it. Not at but, all. but I get it anyway. Really. I know. I know. Even I'm, when I wasn't on the air, they were talking about the 40s yesterday, <laughs> and they made some reference. Wish Bill was here so he could tell us he, how he they didn't know how that went. I'm trying to stick up for you. I know, and, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You just need to quit sucking up to Maria so much, Bill. <laughs> Usually it doesn't happen. Usually he's nudging me out and all kinds of stuff, but he is very nice today. He is in an incredibly gracious mood. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. As he usually is. We all because it's a nice day in Rob's neighborhood. Yeah. It is a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Uh, and it's getting even better because of what uh, Jackie and uh, Jackie Long and Pat Murphy, Vice President and President of the BOE, are here today. And uh, Jackie, you brought in a giant cookie. This is from Ron. Yes. Ron Long, right? No, yes. Now, here's, here's what it says. Happy National Mute Button Day. Now, I was going to read it as this. <laughs> but then I, I realized that, you know, it's probably a joke that no one's in the mood for after the last two days of the show. I bought napkins and, cook and a knife, too, just in case. Oh, very nice. We can cut that up and, and serve yeah, it. So uh, or just break it up. It yeah, there you go. Pat, there you go. Uh, did you bring in any milk, by chance? No, I'm just riding on Jackie's coattails. Today. As we all do. That's yeah. Mr. Hornby's duties. The milk. Oh, I thought he said to ride on your coattails. <laughs> oh, no, 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 he wouldn't do that. I'm yeah. sure. uh, let's uh, get to a couple of items here, uh, Pat and Jackie. Is uh, we have concluded a school year first and foremost, and it uh, certainly was uh, slightly less dramatic than the last school year where we had the breach, the data breach, and, and then obviously everything that followed from there. But uh, the one-year contract of the superintendent runs out at the end of this month. A vote has been taken by the Board of Education, and in a 3-2 vote, you voted to not continue the contract for Ron Stevens. Uh, and I know that uh, the two of you were on the same page in regards to the vote. You were two of the three yes votes for not continuing the contract. Jackie, maybe you could give us your reasoning first. Well, I think. First, I want to say that it was a difficult decision for me. I had many, many, many sleepless nights over this because we um, negotiated over this for m several months, what we were going to do. And uh, at the end, I just felt this county needs to go in a different direction. Um, I think, um, especially after the North Middle incident, um, that kind of sealed the deal for me. Um, you know, I, Ron's been a friend to me for 25 years or more, and I f feel like maybe I've lost a friend because of my decision, but, you know, I wasn't elected to uh, make friends. I was elected to do what I felt was best for this county. Um, you know, all I've heard is he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. He's a very nice guy. Uh, but I felt that we just need to go in another direction. Our discipline and our um, academics are low. And with, although he told me that the situation with North Middle wasn't as bad as it seems, I think it's, I think it's more than 
uh, what it seems, and I am fearful of what could come with other schools. I, we have to get, we have six months to get north moving forward, and along with that, I think we need to get the rest of our schools moving forward. Whatever plan is set up for north, I think we need to um, work on that for all the rest of our schools. Our academics have to be at the forefront and the discipline you know that goes hand in hand and if we can't get the discipline under control and start um, actually following our discipline policy um, not that not just allow people to do what's recommended we have to follow the policy in years past I know nobody likes to hear about what happened 15 years ago but in years past, you had a discipline policy, and every school followed those procedures. There wasn't a specific, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. Here's the warning one, warning two, and then... Are you saying that that was part of the issue at North, that they weren't following that policy specifically? I, I don't know what that, what that was. I'm just telling you I know that that is some of the issue with our discipline and Jackie when Ron was hired on a 3-2 vote you voted yes to hire Ron Stevens. yes and, but Pat you voted no along with Melissa Power about a year ago on the 3-2 vote to hire Ron as the superintendent on a one-year contract and you voted no as a continuation of uh, superintendent Stevens correct correct yeah could you give us more of your uh, reasoning behind that Pat well on the first vote uh, I, I was supportive of another candidate but uh, I was in the minority so we moved on uh, this whole process, uh, it's like driving a car. My focus is on the road ahead of me. I look in the mirror, but I think my focus is what's ahead of us. I view this whole process as an opportunity to make some changes, not, not just at the top, but as well as in our approach to education and trying to find the right candidate to lead us in that direction. Jackie's taken a lot of my reasons uh, for that, but I, I will share with you, and I've, I'm always the teacher in me bringing papers along. Uh, I'm all thumbs here. If you can. But this is talking about the evaluation of a superintendent. Now, I can't go into an evaluation of, uh, of our superintendent. That's confidential as far as what you say, but the area I have marked in this section of code says, additionally, the county board shall evaluate the county superintendent on his or her success in improving student achievement generally across the county, and specifically as it relates to the management and administration of low-performing schools. This state has identified 21 schools that are low-performing. Two of those schools are in Berkeley County. What's the other one, Pat? Win uh, Winchester Avenue. And the uh, so there we're already at a, a pretty remarkable negative number there, and uh, and going back to the February meeting, uh, the management administration of low performing schools carries a lot of weight and code with me, and I uh, I basically based my opinion on what happened after the meeting in in April or. Yes, uh, April or May, excuse me. Uh, I, I too talked to the superintendent. I said, how did things go? And it said, oh, it wasn't bad or something to that effect. It was rather dismissive. And then I subscribed to a number of newspapers at home and I got, and I opened up the Gazette and here I saw a half page story about Berkeley County and North Middle. And I thought, it's bad. And uh, that just put me over the line there. Did you feel as though you were being mis misled, or is it possible that Superintendent Stevens didn't have all the information? Well, it's not whether he had all the information. It's his job to have all the information. And uh, uh, I'm not going to make a, a an accusation I can't uphold. I, I will say that at the Citizens Forum the other day, we had a former retired principal, or a former principal now retired, and uh, he was telling us how local school improvement council presentations were supposed to be made, and they and he told us it, it, it's a what I call a dog and pony show. So uh, it's not just this superintendent 
that this practice has been going on to keep everything positive. I forget, uh, he, he went through a list of all the things. Uh, I, I found it interesting to, to hear what I'd always uh, suspected. But that was one thing, Pat, that we um, knew coming in mm -hmm. that that was occurring and then that we stopped with the local school improvement council presentations because of that. Uh, we had two this year, and it was North Meadow and Winchester Avenue. You know, we want to hear the hard stuff. I don't want to hear the pretties. The pretties are nice to add to it, but you can't get up there and give us a presentation of what is just Do you beautiful. as board members have access to the information that would allow you to challenge a rosy report that you're given? Do you have access to all the test scores in advance, the yes. same as the superintendent does? Yes. Yes. Do you then not bear some of the same responsibilities to know that information if you expect the superintendent to have that information as well? Well, yes. And, yeah, and I, I, I bear some responsibility for it. And you have. I've heard, yeah. I've read your post, but it, it, you, 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 every board member we've interviewed, with the exception of Michael Martin, who mm -hmm. Uh, to this point, I've not been able to communicate with, for whatever reason, to, to come on the show to do interviews about this, has said the same thing, which is that we were given a rosy report, uh, and it tr turned out to be not true about the progress of that school, you, but, which sounds to me like you never had access to that information to find out if what you're being told was true or not. No, we, we had access to the information from last year's West Virginia General Assessment Tests, which showed the 5%. And so we were looking at that, and then we got the information. Uh, you, you don't see the next year's test results until next September, or when they're or August. But, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, you so said something well, well, help me out then. So, so then he did have access to information that you did not yet have access to. Is that what you're saying? Well, at that point, Mr. Stevenson had the access because the test – are given once a year in the spring, and he at the February meeting, those tests had not been given for the most current. He was using another set of tests, the uh, EL, yeah. uh, um, uh, well, the secondary tests yes. that they give. But it wasn't just test scores, correct? Well, we but, have this but, but, dis but, discipline situation oh, yes, that, yes. that we're talking about. We, we did not see in that report discipline reports. Um, we, we, we didn't see that. Um, all right. You, you have to first acknowledge a problem before you can address it. And in this county, we're not acknowledging the problems. We, we, we as a board member, have to ask the questions. Uh, we have to uh, look at that. I, I asked the other day, because uh, one of you, I think it was John, and excuse me, uh -huh. uh, had asked the question about the feeder schools and everything. So I asked for the... Uh, permanent substitutes we have. North has 30 percent. Uh, Eagle School, the feeder school intermediate, has 30 percent. Um, the um, uh, Tuscarora has 28 and a half percent of the permanent substitutes. So you have to start asking for that kind of information. As a board member, uh, we have a very active board that asks a lot of questions. One thing about the contract, in the past, we, uh, when I sat on the board, the board president and the superintendent would sit down and negotiate a contract. And then we would, then they would bring it back to us. I wanted to involve all five of us in the contract negotiating process. So you can't just sit down and meet casually with the superintendent. You have to do it at formal meetings when you have all five of you at, because you have a quorum. So, you know, it's kind of like a slow motion uh, badminton hitting the ball uh, the birdie across the net he would bring some ideas then we would look at it and at the next meeting we would do things so that's why the process was so drawn out we were within a whisker of approving the contract when north broke out when north broke and so that but that's why it took so long to get that point we were negotiating the contract as a body with the superintendent Bill? Yeah, uh, I'm going to editorialize a little bit here, okay. and I realize that the school board is in a difficult position, uh, and I do not go to the school board, so I my knowledge is based on what we hear in this radio station. I was uh, when Ron was on board uh, or here after the uh, North Middle School, I was disappointed that 
he took no responsibility. It was all a, a very defensive posture and a very deflective posture. He kept deflecting everything. Uh, we have a problem in Berkeley County. It's been mentioned here and it's been mentioned, uh, it's been mentioned other places as well. We, ha we have to have a leader, whoever the leader is, to take responsibility and get away from deflecting or getting away from a defensive posture. And that one interview with Ron made me start questioning. No doubt he's a nice guy. He's done a lot of good things. But is he the leader that will move us out of this morass to the plateau that we need to be? And so, again, I, I felt you folks were in a tough position, and there's probably no right or wrong, but I think you did what, what you should what you needed to do what other so refresh my memory he's been ron stevens has been in the school system for his whole life i mean his whole educational career correct yeah, he's been other places okay but uh, but primarily sure. here yeah but primary in here. and how many years did he serve as superintendent um, three no. one no. two, two. To, uh, not quite not would not you quite to, would people argue is that enough time to let him and then working on a one-year contract I'm just I'm kind of being the devil's advocate right. here um, is it enough time to change the direction of the ship in a relatively short period of time when you're at the helm Maria the direction of the ship has to change or we're gonna sink that's not something I signed on for. I signed on to keep this ship moving in the right direction. We don't have a year. So you can't give another year contract, two year contract, and see where it's gonna go. Because the state will be in here and it'll be more schools. So I'm not what willing I, to take that chance. So what I think I hear you saying then is you're launching this extensive search um, for a new candidate um, to to come in and really change direction. Yes, that's my. We have to change direction, or the State Department will be in here taking our jobs, and we'll be sitting there with a sucking on our thumbs, inactive as a board, with an inactive superintendent. If we don't change the direction and address the issues that we're uh, facing. So Ron serves for how much longer? June 30th. Uh, June 30th. And then what happens? Well, we've been told that, uh, that first the board hasn't discussed this, and I, I want to emphasize again, I've done this before on the shows, a disclaimer. I'm here as an individual, not as a board uh, spokesperson. And me also. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not a body when we're not at all together. Mm -hmm. so. But... Uh, and we haven't discussed this yet. Uh, uh, we have had legal uh, counsel to advise us that uh, by code he's entitled to a job as a teacher. But the code goes on. Uh, interpretations of past superintendents have said, well, teacher is defined all these other positions, coordinator, directors, that sort of thing. So... For one year. For one year. So... I, I personally would like to approach this just to say, Mr. Stevens, you'll have a coordinator director's job based upon your salary of experience and educational degree. Uh, but we will decide in August with the new superintendent because superintendents are the ones who are supposed to recommend personnel. And, and uh, it, that's a touchy situation to have your predecessor but, sitting in the same but Pat, this is Pat, this is not the 600-pound gorilla in the room. Mm -hmm. The 600-pound gorilla in the room is who you get as a new superintendent yes, and what's going to be your process. What you do with okay. Ron Stevens down the line is of importance to him, uh, but it's not the importance well, of the school system. Melissa, myself and Melissa work with Dr. Schooley on the process. Yeah. Uh, we posted the job the day after the announcement. I think it was May 24th. It goes off June 10th. We'll pull those applications and uh, meet as a board on the 12th, and we'll have interviews on the 15th. So you're optimistic. Well, then by the 1st of July, you can have a new superintendent in place. 
Um, yes, I'm optimistic. Well, will it be an interim or a permanent? That's a decision the five board members have to make. We're offering it. Uh, we're getting inf conflicting information from from different sources. Can it be? The code says they can only be for one year. Now we want to. That's that can be. If we don't want to put the word interim. We want to say you're the leader for one year. But now we just received other word that we can go a multi-year thing. So. Well, uh, let me refresh that. Okay. First, we were told. Uh, I mean, the code says one year. Then we were directed that we could do multi years. Then we were told after we posted uh, and uh, Friday afternoon, we were told, no, it has to go back to one year. Then today we just got an email that says, no, we can post it multi years. So talk about being all over the place. Um, from, from an outsider looking in that's not shy about giving advice, uh, this is such an important position. And one could argue that we have been less than successful in our prior superintendents for whatever the reason. Why would you not buy as much time as you possibly can, do as broad a search as you possibly can do, and to hope that you would be able to get candidates that would do what we need to do? And so, in, that, in other words, look for an interim. Put it together in the interim for a few months, but that would buy you enough time to do a thorough national search. Well, Pat and I can both tell you this. Here's what we hear about putting an interim in. Candidates will not apply and put their name out there with an interim because they feel that See an that? interim is going to get that position. Then they've applied and then the position that they're in now, wherever it might be, their name's out there because it's uh, public information. They will not apply under those circumstances. And, if you're and going, that's a lot of our reason. And if you're that's limited to reasoning. a one-year contract, good luck getting somebody to relocate. That, that's another problem. That's a very real problem, and I'm glad you're getting around that. Uh, but I've never heard that interim being an impediment of finding a good, uh, good candidate. We've heard it many times. Hmm. Yeah, people, people uh, from people that applied, and also from people down in Charleston. Uh, Howard O'Call told us that he said the interim scared off the candidates. Sure. Why would you want to be hired under an interim basis? You're, well, you're going to move and relocate. Right? Well, no, no. I, I'm hearing Pat say just the opposite, Rob. Maybe I'm hearing wrong. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing Pat say is that a good candidate will not apply because an interim's in place, thinking that the interim uh, is a shoe in to get the job. Yes, yeah, that's we, what we, we both are agree. We, we we agree on that. Right. That's what Whereas a one-year contract, then. If the person, if he or she is doing their keep, job. Keep that question in queue, Maria. We'll okay. get to it after our commercial break as we return with uh, Pat Murphy, president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, and Jackie Long and this giant delicious chocolate chip cookie they brought in. Now, uh, we are in studio with the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield, Maria Lawrenson from the Board of Education, the president, uh, Pat Murphy, and the vice president, Jackie Long. They have been getting grilled on the hot seat for 36 minutes. Time to turn them over, Bill, and get the other side done now. I go, Yeah, exactly right. But you don't get the question. Maria gets it not, first. But I yeah, forgot but it, not, so yeah. he's going. But yeah, not he's on, going. We're not only they grilled while on air, they were grilled off air for a couple, three or four it's minutes. It's a tough segment well. off air, too. Yeah. Hey, I want to go back, Jackie, to a point that you made earlier that obviously we were trying to prevent the state from coming in and taking over schools, right? And you mentioned it. Maybe it won't just be this school. It could be no, others. So that, what does that mean? That's just my – I'm just telling you what my fear is. Uh, once the state kind of gets their hooks into um, a, a CSI school and, and what we're um, dealing with now with – CSI, Nora, Jackie, very quickly. Uh, comprehensive – I knew you were going to ask me that. You should not have used the acronym then. <laughs> I got to find it. Yeah, I've always <laughs> – a school in trouble. Yeah, it's, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, th good. there you school, go. A school of improvement. It, it's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, good. Um, I forgot my... Well, well, let's move on past that anyway. So because you had a meeting Monday night, and there's some, uh, now some plans in place as to how to proceed. Well, I, let me go back to that. Sure. Uh, I just don't want to keep going down that path of the state being involved in running our school system. Certainly. And that is one of my biggest fears 
if it's north now it could with our low test scores it could be more so uh, that's a path i don't want to go down all right so from your meeting on monday night what plan do you have going forward well we we received a copy of what the county's uh, plan for north middle is and then i asked each of the board members to bring ideas for the entire county to uh, put together a a plan that uh, we w would like to see going on. Some of those uh, suggestions were met with some hostility by the uh, some of the areas of the board office, I think. But well, uh, and other board members, some you know, we don't always agree. That's for sure. So, <laughs> um, what what plans were met with hostility? What are you what are you hoping to do? Well, I I personally think that we ought to publish our scores school by school it's public record uh, I advocated publishing the uh, the board office uh, staff more to discourage the growth that I've watched occur there um, there, also, you said their salaries. Their salaries as well. Yeah, I, thought, I think that's very unfair unless you post all salaries. But I, Those uh, are public knowledge anyway. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, you can get on the Internet and uh, on Google or, or just on the West Virginia Department of Ed website and look all that up. Well, at any rate, um, I was wanting more to um, discourage the growth that I've watched over the years. Uh, getting back to uh, Admiral Stubblefield's... Uh, point what was that his point <laughs> his point I'm was sorry, the last jackie I, I, Bill, do you remember pat, pat, yes i do pat was listening jackie was, was not we're all over the place <laughs> yeah. today but, you know i'm listening to him and well, then, please let me get in here before i forget what i was going to say <laughs> go pat uh, go go run with that ball um we took our time reviewing the applications it took a long time but before we picked on picked dr murphy and I've, I've had a lot of mixed reviews about his success as a superintendent. So I challenge, we took our time and did a job and didn't do a good job, I think. I, I'm willing to say, let's see what happens with a short-term search and, um, and not be afraid to go down that path uh, to meet a July 1st deadline. Well, let me counter that. Again. You have a better chance for long-term success if you have a lot of candidates that you can look at. Now, if you made a bad choice the first time around, is not necessarily an excuse for not doing it a second time. Well, I, I will refute the argument there, sir, and say that, so I. I, I, that <laughs> I'm going to ride Jackie's coattails again with the big cookie here. But, That's but Jackie's nickname. That. But <laughs> when you put the word interim out there existing in the in the in the mix the candidates evaporate well it's fun i've never heard that before and yet a lot of selection processes in both private and government uh interim is used as a as a tool to buy to buy enough time to expand the uh the pool of candidates to choose from. Uh, you may well be right, except in my several years of management, mm -hmm. I've never heard that as an impediment. Well, education is entirely different than the rest of the world. Universe. Yes. Can, I want to go back to the action plans at North Middle. <laughs> we started that about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and it's Rob's show. We're going to go back to that. And We're I, being quiet. I, I, want I don't know. know their public, Pat, so I'm not so sure you could yeah, get well, into I, that. I'll, I'll, well, what I'll, can you tell us? I, I will tell you this one because I had it on my list. I think the boundaries of North Middle should be recalculated because I think they have a concentration of neighborhoods that are challenging, that where the children originate, and uh, they come in with a lot of baggage. And I believe that we as a board should uh, direct the administration to uh, try to peel off some of those neighborhoods, redirect the students to other neighborhoods, bring students in. I know I'm talking busing here. And I think that we should try to have a more 
diverse mixture of students going to North rather than a concentration of subsidized housing and other neighborhoods. That I did not see on the recommended recommendation by the central office. And I quite frankly was surprised. Mm -hmm. a lot but of you, Pat, you and I know, because we were in Jefferson County at the same time, what a nightmare it is to redistrict a little school, um, just even one yeah. elementary school, one middle school. I mean, people will come out in droves. Well, I don't, I don't want to say that's not the right thing to do, mm -hmm. um, but boy, it, it's, um, it's very difficult. You remember? I, uh -huh. I know, I yeah, know, and, and and we. But I also have to think about the children going there. Sure. And make sure that they have a chance and they're not just being in a school where there's a heavy concentration of children with emotional and, and, and problems because of their home lives. Now, I know you can have children coming from upper, home, uh, upper neighborhoods, uh, upper financial, uh, socioeconomic neighborhoods, but I think North has a greater dis uh, proportion of, of students who come from poor neighborhoods. Okay, well that, that spreads the problem around better, Pat, but it doesn't address the issues. It well, just the, spreads them around. The other, the other issues, um, a high number of, and I just read the numbers, a high number of um, uncertified teachers are there. I don't know if we could have a pay differential, to, just like Vietnam, combat pay uh, incentives. I, I would be open to a discussion like that. but. Uh, but I, I don't think you can solve your problem solely on professional development. People coming in, telling you how to do the job, and then you have to go back and try well, to it, do the it, job. It, it, it can't be solved solely at North Middle, although that's a big part of the process. The feeder yes. schools going into North Middle have to be addressed as well. Is that part of the action plan? Yes, it is. I was just talking to the principal at Eagle School, and he was telling me how he had gotten more counselors, they they had gone without a counselor more than half a year last year. I think beyond he had, that, yeah, actually, and, and he's getting other he's filling positions with certified people. So uh, and and he's doing a good job. The school over there has a very lot uh, has a lot of good dedicated people who really are empathetic for the children. You have to have that in a classroom where the children are coming from challenged uh, background and you've talked um, before about this before the situation even came up your concerns with the board office mm -hmm. um, numbers of professionals who were there would you would this board okay not this board would the two of you how about that um, advocate um, uh, cutting down the number of professional staff that you have at the board office because that's a solution, right? To move professionals who are certified teachers back into the schools. Well, Is that sort of in the mix? One of the things that I feel, um, we have academic coaches and mentors and they're assigned to the central office, but I think that they ought to be out in the schools, um, located at those schools. Uh, even if they have to go to two or three schools, I think they're assigned to. Um, they are part. They are counted as part of the numbers. I think now of the central office, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. I was I'm asking listening. you. I, I, I picked up on that. How <laughs> many? How many central board office employees are there, Pat? Do you know you got that number somewhere? I I do. Well, you're looking for that. Go ahead. CSI stands for Comprehensive yeah. Support and Improvement Schools. Yes. That's Damon Wright posted that. Damon also said that. You guys have denied positions which have slowed the growth of the central office as well. That's uh, true. A counter That's true. to the yeah. Uh, yeah. discussion about that. Did you find your information? Yes. Best? Well, I, I don't have the entire category here because you have individuals like a I got gotcha. you. But like we have uh, five deputy uh, superintendents, 20 director managers in the instruction area, 32 um, people who are director coordinators for support. So that gives you an idea that, you know, you're 60 plus people. Now you have 20,000 students in the system too, so you, you, you can't be sitting here saying, well, we only need one superintendent up there. He needs, he needs help and support. But what we're concerned about, and I, echo, I will echo uh, Roger, Jackie's coattails again, 
we're concerned that people are telling us out in the schools they're not seeing folks from the board office coming in to very really give them in, uh, give them the attention that they need hands-on support yeah, but it, i'm going to be on my single horse now all these are important considerations all these things that deserve a rich discussion but the issue at hand now is selection of a superintendent well maria asked a question i think pat was just answering. no 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 i'm I, i'm just saying that the issue at hand now is selection of a superintendent yes and you it folks, is for us too you folks are very comfortable that you the three weeks going to give you the pool of applicants that you need to make the the choice of leadership and everything else we're ready to acknowledge that if it's not working it's not working that's that's the answer to your question but we're not going to fail to try to do this because we feel like we have to stay ahead of the state department if we don't get our act together and get get moving they're going to do it for us. I got a text that said there's regarding North Middle, there's a pilot for academics coming, and they've hired multiple certified teachers. Do you know anything about this? I I read about that pilot. Um, it's through, um, my, I can't remember the name of the, uh, it is associated with the Department of Ed. Uh, it seems like a very good pilot program. We've not been told about it, but I read about it. And I know the person that's in charge of it. She worked with the Department of Ed at one time. So this com um, this comes back to a pet peeve of mine, and you we've had this discussion before. What is the role of the local board of education? Well, I started to run that off for yeah, you, but yeah. I ran out of time. Yeah. I, it's, no, it's, I mean, but why is a pilot coming into one of our schools that our local board of education is finding out about it by reading about it in the newspaper somewhere else? I read so, about it all, uh, from Metro News. Or the, Well, it makes no difference where you read about it, but you read about it from, you were kind of secondhand, you were reading about it the same way that I'm reading about it, but yet you're the local official, and I'm not throwing stones at you I'm throwing stones at the the structure that we have right now and I think there is a major disconnect and I still come back to the role of what what is the most what is the valid role that a local board of education has to me that's something that you folks should be involved with more so than the state board of education well um, the code 1851 and 1855 tells us what our duties are and i was going to print that off for you bill but i couldn't yeah. get my printer to work no, you're, you're missing my point on that i i well you've always asked me what our duties yeah. were mm -hmm. and i i'm not missing your point you think that we should have known about that pilot exactly I think, exactly i yes. definitely think yeah. i ha should and that's yeah. why i researched it yeah. when i read about it mm -hmm. definitely that's some of our concerns what but we the, get and what we don't get but the board would people argue the board's job is to hire and evaluate a superintendent. Number one job, right? And hold him in, and hold, hold him that responsible, person especially for academics. Exactly. So all of the other stuff then is more or less ancillary. Are you diving into areas that um, that a board doesn't belong? We do. We have yeah, because we have. the system wasn't working. We. For example, one middle school, um, Melissa Powers said, called us up, said, you all have got to go walk into the school and see the chaos. Of it. it wasn't North. It's another school. North is the tip of the iceberg. I think there are more problems in Berkeley than just North. But we went, so we each individually went out because you can't be a quorum, and we saw the chaos. We went to the superintendent, and he said, well, I was just there, and it looked pretty good to me. And we were sitting there seeing things that I read about in North, kids running wild, uh, un, unsupervised, defying the teachers, and everything else. So we went back and told the superintendent, you got to get on this thing. But we're told we're out of our lane when we go out and investigate. But if we don't go out and investigate, the problem just continues to exist. Who's telling you you're out of your lane, Pat? Well, we're t in our training, for one yeah. thing. Yeah, with the school board association, we we are told all the time we are, are out of our lane with the things that we uh, get involved in. Um, is, your, is it in your lane to to investigate or establish curriculum? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, right after this meeting, I'm going to South Middle to see a training the teachers are going through for IXL so I can understand that because... I, th I thought the IXL scores at North were pretty good, and then I'm told, no, you're misreading it. Well, 
as long as I was misreading it, nobody was telling me you're misreading it, Murphy. But uh, but now, because when I looked at the West Virginia General Assessment, assessment North was down at 5% math. But on this test, it looked, you know, it was a bar graph and showed improvement the second year. So I just made an assumption things are turning around. Well, but, but then we find out that um, the students are progressing. They might be on, and this isn't just North, they might be on in the fifth grade, but they are progressing. They're on second or third. Well, you know, that's not explaining enough to me. We found that out some the other night, and maybe it's our lack of uh, asking the questions. We ask hard questions, but you don't know what you don't know. In regards to the central office, the board hires the superintendent and evaluates the superintendent. Are you responsible for the budget? Yes. Yes. The central office is part of that budget, correct? Correct. If you have questions about the central office, do you not have the power to eliminate roles that you feel are unnecessary from the office? No. The superintendent has to make those recommendations. Now, we can tell him, well, it's not enough. Go back and do it again. Do you do that? Yes, sometimes. We well, I, the other day, when, when we had the uh, highlights, they, had, they wanted to hire another um, computer person. Uh, coordinator or something. Executive director. I, I, I just told him, you got enough people running around here with bonnets, you don't need it. And we just <laughs> eliminated it. But, uh, um, so we just, we just, we just said no. But here, here's, here's a secret that's known in the, by the rank and file. We have a practice long before this superintendent that if you had a principal in school not functioning, and this is not true of everybody in the board office. I want to make sure you, that message gets clear. We have a lot of good people in the board office doing a good job, trying to at least. Yeah, and I'll second that because I worked in there, and they, yeah. you know, they do a wonderful job. But we have less than a handful, I'd say, of people who were principals at the school and couldn't function. And so they messed up, and they were moved up to get them out of the school. That's... That's sad because people lose confidence in the board office when they see something like that happen. Well, you're stating something, Pat, that a lot of people have stated off the air over the years. And you're the first person to state it on the air. Well, I don't know if I want the honor, but anyway. <laughs> here's, here's another thing that concerns me. Why we have a board office on the, on the south end of, Bur of Martinsburg with a number of administrators there. We have three administrators from Charleston drive up 315 miles, and they make this declaration of an emergency. Why wasn't our board office over there monitoring that school and the other 31 schools in this county? Do we have to have people from outside come in and recognize problems, or do we have people in the board office who can recognize problems and are encouraged to acknowledge them? Yeah, I, I'm, I know from the text that I've received that the North Middle situation was not a secret to anybody. No, it was. So no, it wasn't. the question is a valid one. If it was not a secret to anybody, then why wasn't there more monitoring? Yeah. And, and I don't know that we've had an answer to that question yet well, that's the, been satisfactory. The answer to your question is we're look, looking for a new superintendent. Well, I, it's, I guess that's the way to wrap up the segment. Oh, we finished? <laughs> yes, you have some cookie now. <laughs>